Hello and welcome to an FPGA vision video. Here we'll have a look at the FPGA implementation of our spiking neural network. And uh, we start with a block diagram. The data input is a red, green, blue video signal. And uh, this is converted with a random generator into spikes. The spike trains go into neurons in a hidden layer and an output layer. And then we have output processing to generate from the spikes of the output neurons a red, green, blue output image. The design is coded in VHDL by a student of our university, Mr. Niederberger, and it's available on GitHub. Before we have a look at the code, there's one important thing to consider. The spiking neural network uses 64 cycles for one output. However, we use our setup with a video input where we have one input per cycle. How do we match that? Well, we take 64 input values and generate one output value. This is a simplification, but it's a very good approach to illustrate the working of the spiking neural network. We will see the effect in the output of the spiking neural network. This is the top level of the design. We have uh, clock input, video input with sync signals and red, green, blue. We have video output with sync signals and again red, green, blue. Then we have internal signals and constants. The control block delays the sync signals. And then we have a random generator to convert between the integer values of red, green, blue to spikes. This is here in the submodule. This is the entity. Then we have a random generator. And now we compare the integer red, green, blue value with the random value. And if the integer value is larger than the random value, we generate a spike. And thereby we get a spike train. The spike train goes into the different neurons. Here is the hidden neuron 0, hidden neuron 1. And here we again find the parameters from training and normalization. So these are the values we got from the algorithm of the previous lecture. Here are the hidden nodes. Then this output node, again, these parameters have been generated by training and normalization. And the output of the output neurons is accumulated. And if the value is larger than the threshold, we output a blue value, a yellow value, or if we have not detected enough spikes, we output black value. Also, we can have a look now at the neuron. This is uh, the entity again with the weights that we give to the neuron. Here are the spikes of the input. And um, if there is a spike, we select the corresponding weight for all the inputs. We have an edit tree that sums up all these different weights plus the bias. And here we have an accumulator for the values. If the value of the accumulator is larger than the threshold, we generate an output spike and we subtract the threshold from the accumulator. This design can be implemented on an FPGA and we have a remote lab to provide you an experimentation environment. In this video, I will have a look at the simulation because uh, this allows us a much better view of the internal operation of the spiking neural network. The test bench is also provided on GitHub and it requires a test image as the input file. Using the VLC player, we take a snapshot of one image. Then we take IrfanView to convert that image into the PPM format, the portable pixel map with ASCII encoding. This gives a text file with RGB values that is suitable to be read by the test bench. For simulation, we use Questa, which is free with the Intel FPGA Starter Edition, and we generate a new project. We include all the source code files and compile them, and then we simulate the test bench. 
The test bench generates an output image and uh, the overlay of the input image shows that the network correctly identifies the blue and yellow road signs. The design works with frames of 64 cycles, therefore we get one output value for 64 consecutive input pixels in a row. Here we can see that detection is at the threshold. The road sign partly overlaps the 64 cycle block, so that sometimes we have a detection, sometimes not. For analysis of the simulation, we have a look at the detection of the blue region and we see that the right block is one line above the detection of the left block. We will see that in a minute. Now we look at the waveforms to understand the internal working of the spiking neural network. We go back to the Questor simulator. Simulation has completed and we reformat the screen to see more of the waveform. You see input data, output data and we jump to the start to find the first edge of the blue output. Here we have it and we see the blue output is generated because we have a number of spikes on the neuron. There are no spikes here, so no blue output. Let's jump to the next occurrence. This is the second line where we have um, two frames with 255 blue output. Here is another blue frame. So these are the blue regions we saw earlier in the output image. And here we see corresponding spikes on the output neuron. So this gives you an idea how to analyze the behavior of the spiking neural network with the simulator. So now you have the code to train and implement a spiking neural network on an FPGA. Because we need 64 cycles for one output value, we do not meet the real-time requirements for video processing. But uh, the design is a very good example of the internal workings of a spiking neural network. So, I hope you enjoyed the videos. Thanks for watching.